Yes, we'd like to bring up. His name is Ed Braddy, and by the way, Ed, I, I kind of like being out front here if you prefer the, uh, the lecture, and that is fine. Ed is the executive director of the American Dream Coalition. That is a nonprofit public policy organization that promotes freedom, mobility, affordable home ownership through free market alternatives to the command and control status quo. And Ed Braddy would like to speak to you right now on this rail system they're talking about building between here and Orlando and who's going to ride that crazy thing? Ladies and gentlemen, Ed Braddy. Thank you, thank you. This is great. This is great. I mean, it's a little windy here. I'll take off my jacket too. You know, I thought I was going to come down and have the best shirt in the house, but I am grossly understated that. You guys look great. Let's hear it for the Constitution. And let's hear it for limited government and freedom. And let's hear it for vegetables. All right, I did that to see if there are any infiltrators in the audience. And I, and I want you to know, if there are, if there are, I'm not going to slow down just so you can follow. We're going to get to business. Folks, I want to begin with a fairy tale. And now it's not mine or yours, but it's one that the mayor of Tampa believes to be true. You see, Mayor Iorio loves Tampa as much as you do, and she thinks you all are fine people because you give her tax dollars that she can spend. But she is scared for you. She, uh, see, as fine a city as Tampa is, it is beset with fire-breathing dragons. Now, these are wicked, nasty creatures that breathe noxious, noxious fumes out of their tailpipes and roam the streets, scaring off pedestrians and making this whole city unlivable. You see, for, uh, for hip mayors and urban planners and other elites, the dangerous dragons or what we call the automobile. Now, for us regular rubes, our cars are just mobility machines that are designed to help us get where we want, when we want, and to do so pretty efficiently. Yeah, there are some problems with them, some pollution, but we know that today's cars are better than yesterday's cars, and tomorrow's cars are going to be better than today's. So we know we're getting there. But for the bright lights like Mayor Iorio and others, the dragon must be slayed. And so she and her me and members of your county commission, dressed in shining armor, want to ride in on a studly steed that they call light rail. And they want to make your city even better. Now friends, not even my kids believe in this fairy tale. Well, maybe my two littlest girls. My name is Ed Braddy, and I'm the executive director of the American Dream Coalition. Now, we're a nonprofit policy organization that bridges the gap between the scholarly world of think tanks and academic research and the grassroots activists and other concerned citizens like you who are trying to restore our country to its founding principles and to make sure the opportunity for the American Dream is available to everyone. Our website's AmericanDreamCoalition.org, and I am honored to have a few minutes to share with you my concern about the out-of-control spending and the saddling of our children and our grandchildren with mountains of unsustainable debt. And I'm here to say a few words about the rail transit system in particular. It's true cost, not the mythical fantasies its proponents claim. And I want to put it against an even bigger backdrop, one that I know that you'll take every bit as seriously as I do. We all share a deep concern about big government at the federal level with Obamacare, cap and trade, we know it's there. But beginning even before Obama was the explosive spending, the out of control policies and the rising debt levels. And now with President Obama, Obama it's been taken to a higher and more reckless level. But it's also drill it down to the state level. And, and our state legislature is blessedly better than many others, but still we must be on guard, even at the state level, for the inexorable growth of the bureaucratic administrative state. 
Now, friends, there is a third threat to your liberty that often flies under the radar screen, and that is what I call big government in your backyard. That is the local councils, the local city commissions, county commissions. These are expanding the regulatory powers of government at your expense. We see incremental infringements on property rights, and then we see the big bang with eminent domain. But it happens at all levels, and it happens locally. That is what we're up against, and I'm glad to, to be able to shine some light on it. Now, light rail is one of those urban fads that mayors and cities all across the country have fainting spells over. But I'm here to provide the smelling salts. Uh, proponents claim that it will reduce congestion, they claim it increases economic development, and that it will even save the environment. And all you have to do is turn over just a little bit more of your hard-earned money and consign your children to perpetual debt. Doesn't that sound like a great trade-off? Oh. Now, now, what may be a new proposal to you here has actually been done in cities all across the country and the American Dream Coalition, we track this kind of stuff. So I'm here to provide you with some of the facts. Now the next time your mayor or someone else tells you about the wonders of light rail, tells you about the Mecca of Portland, Oregon, where no one rides the car and everyone takes the train, and how it can transform cities and relieve congestion, I want you to consider some numbers. 1.5. 1.5 is the percentage of urban tra travel by public transportation in the United States. 1.5%. 0 0.2. Let's talk intercity travel because we have a high speed rail proposal between Orlando and Tampa. 0.2%. That's the percent, that's the market share of intercity travel by Amtrak. So if high-speed rail is wildly successful and we triple the ridership, we will be at greater, we'll be at just one half of one percent. That's what we're getting for the 1.25 billion dollar down payment by the Obama administration for a project that has a build out of about six billion dollars that everyone else has to pay. Here's another number. Forty percent. That is the average cost overrun of rail transit systems in the United States. So don't even think you're lucky with six billion dollars. It's going to be a lot more. Two. Two is the number of high-speed rail systems in the world that actually break even. Hong Kong and Tokyo. Every other high-speed rail system, including the ones in Europe that are always talked about in Spain and France, are all heavily subsidized annually. They have to be. A line in Tokyo just uh, was called on by its creditors. Three. Three is the number of light rail systems in the United States of America that actually have eclipsed, get this, 10% of the market share for ridership. All other systems are lower, even Portland. Our core coalition, we've had conferences, San Jose, Houston, Portland, Minneapolis, all of those, all of the ridership levels never materialize. The congestion increases. 